Okay, so I welcome you all to the Healthy Blood Pressure class. In today's masterclass, we are going to learn the clinically approved and the most effective means for you to achieve a healthy blood pressure, okay? By utilizing the power of a low carbohydrate diet as well as intermittent fasting so that you can rely less on your medications, okay? So this is a guaranteed method. It's also a clinically approved method. And so far as I know, it's the most effective way for you to lower your blood pressure without having to depend on your medications, okay? So just before I begin, I'd like to say that if you cannot see me, if you cannot hear me, and if you cannot see my slides at any point in time during the session, please make use of the chat so that I don't want to unmute everyone so that the voices don't override and you will just hear my voice, okay? So if you cannot see me or hear me at any point in time, please make use of the chat, okay? I have the chat box open and I will attend to any issues during the, during the session, okay? So why should you stick around? Today would mark a new day for your health and life because I will be explaining how your body works right now as a hypertensive patient, which is not the same as a regular person, okay? I will also explain why your drugs are not the best way for you to manage high blood pressure and what is the best way, okay? I would also be answering the question of if high blood pressure has a cure and also how you can heal your system via dieting so that you can depend less on medications. And then I will expose the clinically approved way for you to manage your blood pressure using food, even with the low carb diets. And I also have a free gift for you if you stay till the very end of this webinar, okay? So this class is going to last 90 minutes and I have already, already used three minutes. So I have only eight to seven minutes with you, which is an hour and a half, okay? And in the next 90 minutes, my goal is to get you to believe that your food, specifically a low carbohydrate diet, as well as intermittent fasting, is the answer to managing your blood pressure effectively, okay, without having any side effects. So what I'm going to do is to show you my framework that would make it very simple for you to achieve a healthy blood pressure of 120-80, okay? Now, in the past year, I've had an amazing chance to help over 100 hypertensive patients, and I've been able to help them get their lives back on track right? But it wasn't always this way. A few years ago, I came back home to a hypertensive. My, my dad is hypertensive. And when I came back home, he had already suffered a stroke. Okay. Now as a first child, I quickly went into survival mode. Okay. Because my dad is a breadwinner of the family. Now he had been hypertensive for over 20 years, right? He takes his, his medications, you know, like many of you do. He tries to eat well, but even despite the medications, he still suffered from what the medications were supposed to prevent in the first place. Okay, so when I came home from medical school, I asked him, how is it that, you know, you take your medications daily, you try to exercise, you do your best, but you still ended up with a stroke. And this, this stroke left him half paralyzed. So the right side of his body, he wasn't able to move it. And when I asked, he told me that his drugs kept him, were blood thinning and the laxatives kept him tired, obese, and almost immobile. Now, like I said, I'm the first child of my family and I don't want to lose my dad. So I quickly went into survival mode. I tried to research a lot to see how I can help my dad, you know, recover. Okay. Now, I decided to find ways to help my dad via daily salads. And thankfully, we had a 16-week research project at school, and I was asked to pick just one condition to research extensively over, and I chose stroke, okay? So my research pro projects and also researching via the European standard helped me to find some discoveries on how the body really deals with high blood pressure. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is to simply share my findings with you, including testimonies of other people who have gone through this method of a low carbohydrate diet and intermittent fasting. Okay, so I hope that we are ready to get into the session. 
Once again, my name is Rita. I am a medical student and I am a wellness consultant and I am your host for today. So let's go straight into the class without wasting any time. Now I have just one simple question for you, okay? Please let me know using the chat. Do you think or do you believe that high blood pressure has a cure? I would love to see your comments in the chat. Do you believe that there is a cure somewhere or something that can cure your hypertension for good? Please let me know using the chat. I would be waiting, okay? Let's use three minutes to get our answers in the chat box. Do you believe that high blood pressure has a cure? Okay, I see some comments already. Mr. Daniel says, no cure. Mr. Abuba says, I can't tell. Mrs. Priscilla says, yes, I do. Okay. Anyone else? Do you believe that high blood pressure has a cure? Tobin says, here to learn all of that. Okay, that's good. But from your understanding right now, do you think it has a cure? We are definitely going to go through it in a minute, okay? But I, I want to know some of your thoughts. So some people think there is a cure, other people don't think so. Okay, so for us to answer this question, let us first of all know the meaning of the word cure, okay? <laughs> Mr. Emo says, here to learn more from you, but medical expert says there is no cure. Okay. Ms. Priscilla says, yes, when we practice all we are being taught. Okay. So let's really understand what a cure means. Okay. Now, if you look at WebMD, okay, to cure in, in medical terms, to cure something is to relieve a human being of the symptoms of that thing. So if I say you want to cure your high blood pressure, it means that I'm trying to relieve you of the symptoms of high blood pressure. Do you agree with this statement? If your symptoms go away, do you consider yourself cured of that disease? Now, the funny thing is that high blood pressure actually has no symptoms. It's when you start taking medications that you begin to experience side effects of your medications, right? But in the medical world, for you to cure somebody is for you to relieve the person of the symptoms of that disease, okay? And if you take a look at the definition of cure as a noun, it means a substance that would relieve a person of the symptoms of that disease, which, you know, is a medication, okay? But I don't believe that that's what we are looking for. I mean, if we are trying to cure somebody, we mean to totally restore that person's health back to the way it was you know, and not just via, um, not just to remove the symptoms of that disease, right? Now, there is no cure to high blood pressure, if I am being honest and sincere with you. And I say that there is no cure to high blood pressure because there is no substance. There is no pill, there is no herbal drink, whatever it says that you are going to take today and that thing, that substance independently would take all of your hypertension away. It does not exist. If it existed, so many people would not be on antihypertensive medications today. High blood pressure would be as simple as malaria. When you have malaria, you take an anti-malaria drug and you are done with it in three to five days, right? Except your malaria is advanced, you know? So if there is some form of product or substance or herbal drink or whatever it is that could cure high blood pressure, the World Health Organization would have let us know a very long time ago, and we would not be in this class today. 
So according to the word cure in medical terms, there is no cure to high blood pressure. Now, the thing is, there is no cure because high blood pressure is not a disease. Hypertension is simply a physiological adaptation. It's an adaptation of life. Your body is smart and everything that your body does, your body does on purpose. It always returns to homeostasis, except something makes it otherwise. Examine yourself as a hypertensive patient. None of your body parts are malfunctioning. Your heart is working the way it's supposed to work. So are your kidneys and so is your liver. Everything concerning your body parts, your body organs, nothing is malfunctioning. In a sense, you are not sick, okay? So there would not be a cure because there is no disease to be cured, all right? So your body simply changed into the state of being a hypertensive patient because of the life conditions that you have given it, okay? Now, I know that this may sound funny. So let us take some real life examples of physiological adaptations, okay? Now, if you have never experienced snow, let's say you've never traveled outside of Nigeria before, okay, and you do go, and you go in the winter time, because it is your first time experiencing snow, it would seem as though you want to freeze to death. Meanwhile, somebody who has lived in, you know, winter uh, areas, let's say the United States, somebody who has lived there their entire lives would not feel the same way as you. Why? Because that person's body over time has adapted to that kind of environment and that kind of season. They will be able to withstand the cold way better than you. Okay? So if you don't use something, your body down regulates that thing. It's the same as people who work out. Okay? A bodybuilder continually puts stress on his muscles and the body will then respond by giving him more muscle in order to withstand that pressure. Meanwhile, somebody who doesn't work out, somebody who is just sitting around all day at home doing nothing, that person is not going to build any muscle. That person would gain what? Weights instead, because the person is not making use of their muscles, not putting stress on their muscles, right? So everything that your body does is in response to something. If you are a Christian, the parable of the talents, okay? There was a master that gave three servants. One, he gave five talents, another one he gave two, and the other one gave one. You, you should be familiar with this story if you are a Christian, okay? Now, the, per the people that used their five and two talents respectively, you know, they engaged with their talents and they got more, right? Meanwhile, the person that used that, that got one talent just went and buried his talents, right? And he didn't make any more. So... Your body does everything in response to something. And if you don't use your body parts, your body will down-regulate that thing. So this is what we call physiological adaptation, okay? And we see it every day in life, even when you are cooking. You know, at some point in time, perhaps when you were younger, you won't be able to touch hot pots, right? But as you get older, you get used to it, right? So that's a physiological adaptation, okay? Now, high blood pressure is a result of insulin resistance or plaque formation. I will get to that in a minute, okay? These two main causes of high blood pressure are physiological adaptations. Now, this simply means that plaque formation and insulin resistance is not allowing your body pump blood around your system efficiently, okay? Now, you were not just born with high blood pressure, right? There was a point in your life where you did not consider yourself a hypertensive patient. So let's go back 20 years in time before you were diagnosed with high blood pressure and placed on medications. Now, there are only two forms of high blood pressure. We have essential hypertension and we have non-essential hypertension. Essential hypertension is high blood pressure that is that is due to things like food and your lifestyle choices, also like your family history as well. Now, non-essential hypertension just takes up 10% of medical cases, and this is high blood pressure that is as a result of something else, okay? Let's assume you are dealing with kidney failure or kidney disease, and that is what is causing your BP to rise. If you treat your kidney, your BP would go down. 
So that's what we call non-essential hypertension. Now, this essential hypertension, 90% of the cases are essential. It is due to either family history, your lifestyle choices, your food, eating habits, etc. Now, when it comes to this essential hypertension, there are two major causes of essential hypertension. We have plaque formation and we have what is called insulin resistance. These two causes have their roots in inflammation and poor eating habits, okay? Now, I want us to go through insulin resistance and plaque formation together. Let us really understand these two terms and you know if you are in this category or not, all right? Now, the first on our list is insulin resistance. The advanced form of insulin resistance is what we call diabetes, okay? Now, insulin resistance is simply a condition where muscles, cells, and the liver cannot absorb sugar out of the blood like they used to do before, okay? Let me play this video again so that we can be clear. Do you see these white molecules moving with the blood, with these red blood cells inside this blood vessel? Let us assume that that, that is the sugar molecule, right? Now, if you are insulin Hello everyone, can you hear me? I'm sorry, my internet kicked me out. But I'm back, can you hear me? Can you see my screen as well? Please let me know you in the chat, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. All right. So I was explaining that insulin resistance is simply a condition where your body is not able to get these sugar molecules, okay, out of the blood, at least to a good extent, okay? Now, the reason behind this is that you simply have enough, you have an overload in, you have an overload in your storage, okay? It's just like uh, there is food in the fridge, okay? And you are trying to force more food into the fridge, Okay, so this is simply what we call insulin resistance. And the truth of the matter is that almost everybody on this earth is insulin resistant. Almost everyone. Okay, some people, however, are in the advanced stage of insulin resistance, which is diabetes. Now, insulin resistance doesn't just happen. Okay, now I have this short graph here for us to really, really ex uh, understand insulin resistance. Okay, remember, we are going 20 years back in time. Now, in year one, at this time, we are probably, let's assume I am dealing with a 50-year-old patient. Okay, 20 years ago, this person is 30. Now, in year one, the person eats typical Nigerian diets, bread and tea for breakfast, right? Rice and stew for lunch, and at night, you'll probably fry, fry yam or you fry potato and stew. Typical Nigerian diet, full of carbohydrates and fry fry. Now the body would release five blocks of insulin. Insulin is a hormone that is going to take all these sugar molecules, okay? If you can see my pointer, insulin is what is going to take these sugar molecules away from the blood vessel, okay? So your body would release five blocks of insulin to handle that typical Nigerian diet. At this time, you don't have insulin resistance. Everything is okay with you. But you don't change your eating habits. Nothing is wrong. You know, you are still eating your regular Nigerian meals, carbohydrates, carbohydrates, your soft drinks. You know, you, you, you have fun. You enjoy your life. You don't think much about your health. Okay. Seven years later, nothing really changed in your diet. But your body storage or your body's tolerance for carbohydrates is beginning to increase or rather decrease okay so your body now has to produce three times as much insulin as it did in year one in order to withstand that same eating habits you remember nothing really changed it's not as if you started um gulping down 10 sodas every single day okay now another seven years down the line seven to eight years down the line Still, nothing changes in your diet, but your insulin levels are skyrocketing. 
from year one to year 15, you now use five times as more insulin than you are supposed to. This means that your body can no longer, at this stage, this is where some of us are, okay? If we are not fully diabetic, so many of us are in either year 15 or year seven. So at this time, you are not having any symptoms. You think that everything is okay with you. I mean, when you check your blood sugar, it is, it is, it is okay. You know, you don't see it as something that you should be worried about. Meanwhile, internally, everything is not fine. But because you have no symptoms, you think that everything is okay with you, okay? Things have worsened by the time you get in year to year 15. And you see that no matter how much your body ups its insulin, it still cannot bring down this blood glucose, this red bar, back to the way it was in year one. And then five years after year 15, in year 20, you are a full-blown diabetic patient. No matter how much, you, you, you see, you are using 10 times as much insulin than you are supposed to. And even upon that 10, um, 10 times more insulin, your body still cannot bring down this blood sugar to the way it was in year one. So many of us, like I said, we are in year 15 and year seven, okay? Many of us are year 15 and year seven. That's what we call insulin resistance. So because you are not diabetic, many of us don't pay attention to this blood sugar. Many of us don't pay attention to insulin resistance because we feel like we don't have an issue with blood sugar, okay? Now, this is somebody's, uh, this, this is the amount of blood a normal person should have. And your blood sugar is just, is just supposed to be one tablespoon, okay? You just need just one tablespoon of blood sugar per blood volume, not in a day, but the amount of blood that you have, okay? You simply need just one tablespoon of sugar to be rubbing around your blood, but an average person, an average person has 31 times as much. This is why I said that so many of us are insulin resistant, but we do not know. Insulin resistance, it's, it's even deadlier than cancer because so many people have it. So many people are walking around with insulin resistance today, okay? But they don't know it. So this is an average person, an average man or woman not even a diabetic patient, just an average person has 31 times more than usual, okay? Now, how does this affect you as a hypertensive patient? Because we may now be thinking, okay, I am not um, diabetic, at least, you know, it's not my problem at the moment. How does insulin resistance affect me as a hypertensive patient? The first thing is it does is that it doesn't allow your body to absorb potassium. And when your body cannot absorb potassium, your sodium levels increase. That's why when you, when you take blood tests and you see that your sodium level is high, it's not as if you are consuming salts like a mad person or that you are going overboard with your salts. No. The thing is, if you have enough potassium, it would handle or manage your sodium levels. Okay? But because of insulin resistance, your body can no longer absorb potassium from the food that you are eating, and then it increases sodium, your sodium levels, okay? Now, when your cells are resistant to insulin, when you have this insulin resistance, your blood vessels, when you have these sugar molecules moving around your blood vessels, your blood vessels can get stiff, and it can also be damaged. And this is what, this is the next thing we lead to, what we call plaque formation. Now, I want you to look at this video, okay? Take a look at my video. I will start it again. This is the normal blood vessel of a regular person, right? Uh-oh, I see a red mark on my screen. Please don't write on my screen, okay? All right. So this is the blood vessel of a regular person, okay? Of a hypertensive patient, rather. Now, as these sugar molecules roam around your blood vessel, but you don't know it yet because you, are, you have not been pronounced as a diabetic patient, so you are just living your life eating all sorts of carbohydrates and sugary foods and fried, fried foods, it can damage this blood vessel, okay? And then you can see what happens. You can see this yellowish stuff 
it begins to grow. Now, this blood vessel has some injuries that we cannot see. Now, when your body is transporting cholesterol, remember your, your blood is not just, you know, for life. Your body, your blood transports nutrients as well. You know that, right? Now, when your body transports cholesterol, it can get stuck inside this blood vessel because there is now a hole. There is an injury there because of the excess blood sugar, okay? There is now an injury there and cholesterol can get stuck and it will, it will just keep rising and rising and rising and rising and rising and rising. And then can you see this? Can you see that the diameter of this blood vessel because of the presence of this plaque has completely reduced the diameter of this blood vessel. And if I take you back to your physics class when you were younger, what did we say pressure is? Force divided by area, right? And when the force is constant, but you decrease the area, what happens to the pressure? The pressure goes up, right? Now, your heart is still working fine. Remember I said at the beginning of this class, nothing is wrong with your heart or your body organs as a hypertensive patient. So the force is constant, but because the area has been affected, the area has reduced, and this can happen from at multiple parts of your blood vessel because the area is now decreased. The surface area is now decreased. What happens to the pressure within the blood vessels? It goes up, and that's simply what you call high blood pressure. Your, your, your blood pressure is simply higher than normal. Okay, so do you now see how insulin resistance leads to plaque formation? Okay, and when you have this plaque buildup severe in your blood vessels, it can lead to what we call stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. This is it. When we tell you that high blood pressure leads to stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure, this is, this is simply the explanation. Okay, because of this plaque formation, if this happens in a blood vessel in your brain, it can completely close up uh, transportation of blood to your brain. And you know what that means. In a matter of seconds, you can be gone. Okay? So this is simply what we call stroke. And if this um, plaque formation due to insulin resistance happens in a blood vessel that is in your heart or that supplies blood to the heart itself, even though your heart pumps blood, your heart needs blood itself, right? Now, when this plaque formation happens in an artery that supplies blood to the heart, it can decrease oxygen to that heart, and then you have a heart disease. And when the same thing happens to your kidneys, you have a kidney disease. So when people, when doctors tell you that, okay, hypertension leads to so, 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 and so, this is simply the reason why it leads to those things, okay? Now, you can see that hypertension did not just happen. Your blood pressure is going up because something has tampered with the surface area. Your blood pressure has also gone up because something has tampered with your, your, your potassium absorption. And when your potassium absorption is reduced, your sodium, levels goes, your sodium levels go up and it increases your blood pressure. So your body is just responding to the way things are going on inside of you. And this is why I say that there is no cure to high blood pressure because high blood pressure is not a disease. It is simply a physiological adaptation. Okay? So please, I want to ask you, do you now understand the relationship between hypertension and physiological adaptation? Please let me know using the chat. Okay? Are we together? All right. Okay. Only two people are, are together with me. Okay. All right. Now let's move on with our class. Okay. So you can you would probably ask yourself, okay, Rita, if you said be, at the beginning of this class that um your body would always return to homeostasis, your body is smart. How come my body doesn't just deal with this thing on its own? Okay, now let me tell you why. 
your body wants to help you without you having to take medications, but there is a problem. Things have changed from the way things were about a century ago. In the olden days, they would have feasting times and they would also have fasting times. Okay, are we together? They would have feasting times and fasting times. They will have times to fill up, times to celebrate, times, times to, you know, enjoy life. And then they would also have times to clean out the pantry. Now, remember, insulin resistance, what leads to plaque formation is simply because your storage is full. Okay, your storage is full. So if you can simply give your body time to clean out its pantry, you wouldn't be insulin resistant in the first place. In the past, they used to have one to two meals a day. Right now, people eat up to five to six times every single day. Five to six times. There is a very limited intake of key minerals to help with that oxidative stress and inflammation that's, um, that insulin resistance brings because of how many times we eat in a day, okay? So your body just releases more insulin to bring out that sugar out of the blood and give it to your cells. But your cells are saying, no, it has too much sugar already. So the sugar just remains in the blood and then it will start to stiffen up the blood vessels and create injuries and then cholesterol will get trapped in there and then cholesterol too will do its own damage of reducing your, your blood vessel diameter and then your blood pressure goes up. Okay? So the thing is, we need to manage this as soon as possible. And how we are managing it right now is we are making use of two, two vehicles, okay? There are two vehicles for us to use to manage this insulin resistance and plaque formation, okay? Which is the primary cause of blood pressure, of high blood pressure. Right now, we are using vehicle one, which is depending on our medications. Now, I have absolutely nothing against your medications okay i have nothing against your medications but in an attempt to help you manage your blood pressure your medications can make things worse it forces your body to do what your body is incapable of doing leading it to side effects take for instance a baby is full but you are still forcing food down that baby's throat. It's not even a baby, a normal human being like yourself. When you are full and you keep forcing food down, down, your, down your throat, eventually you will throw up, right? So as you are forcing your body to do that, which your body cannot do on its own, your body then throws up, in quotes, by leading, by giving you these side effects, okay? You know, I don't need to tell you, it reduces your life's quality. You must pay the price for trying to bypass the way your body works. You must pay the price. And the price for that is experiencing the side effects of your medications. Another problem with your medications is, is that they don't do anything to help you with your insulin resistance and plaque formation. I will take that again. In essence, or in simpler terms, your drugs do not treat high blood pressure from its root cause. If it did, you wouldn't be here today. We're not going to be having this conversation right now. Okay? What your body would do is, yes, insulin resistance raises sodium levels. Okay, your body would then treat the effect, which is increasing the sodium level, right? It will bring it down. But what happens to the insulin resistance? It can still raise sodium up again, right? And that's why you need to take these medications every single day to make sure that you are in check. Okay? It causes your heart to also beat slower or reduce palpitation because as a hypertensive patient, because of that blockage, okay, because of that damage that that plaque formation is causing to your blood vessel, your heart notices that something is wrong and then your heart starts to beat faster. Okay, so what your medications will do is you simply try to slow down your heartbeats. And for your plaque, it will try to dilate your arteries a little bit, open it up a little bit, 
okay? So that blood can then flow easier, okay? Let me go back so that you understand what I'm trying to say. When you take your medications, it will try to open up this artery, you know, open it up a little bit so that blood can then have enough space to flow, okay? But is it treating the root cause of the problem? No, it isn't, okay? The insulin resistance is still there. The plaque formation is still there. You are still working on the effects, 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 symptoms, 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 symptoms. And so because the problem is still there, you would need to take your medications every day to make sure that your BP is in check, okay? Now, your medications do quite um, good things for you, actually, okay? Being that they help to reduce your blood pressure so that you know that you are not going to suffer a stroke or a kidney failure or a liver failure as a result of high blood pressure, right? So that you don't die from hypertension. But if you are somebody like my dad that took his medications religiously for 20 years, he still suffered a stroke. So it is not even guaranteed, okay? It does not attend to the root cause of the problem. It does not attend to the problem of obesity and belly fat. It doesn't attend to the problem of insulin resistance or diabetes, homocysteine levels, which is one of the, it's one of the reasons people are hypertensive today as well. This homocysteine levels. If you check yourself and you have hypertension for no reason, when I mean no reason, your blood sugar is okay. You don't have insulin resistance. Neither are you, are you suffering with plaque formation you sleep very well, you are not obese or overweight, nothing is wrong with you, but you still have high blood pressure. It is homocysteine that is a culprit, okay? So please take it from me today. Homocysteine is a culprit if you, if you have, in quotes, unknown hypertension, okay? So your medications doesn't treat homocysteine, it doesn't help with plaque formation, it doesn't help with oxidative stress, it doesn't help with inflammation, it just works on the symptoms of hypertension, okay? And because you are trying to bypass something, because you are trying to do that which your body cannot do by force, you would begin to experience symptoms and side effects, like frequent urination, you getting tired and dizzy all the time, you know, sexual dysfunction, you getting depressed, you're not able to, being able to exercise, etc. okay? So now the question is, if our drugs cannot help us with this insulin resistance and plaquing, what does, okay? How exactly can we get rid of insulin resistance and plaquing, which will help us to lower our blood pressure naturally so that we do not have to depend on our medications, okay? It is quite simple. All you have to do is take some steps backward. They say it as to retrace your steps. Like I said before, you were not born a hypertensive patient, okay? So you, you lived your life in a certain way that led you to hypertension today. All you have to do is simply undo the adaptation. Now, what does that even mean to undo the adaptation? You have to, first of all, reduce your fructose and sugar levels, your consumption of processed foods, how often you eat as well as your carbohydrate foods. These five things here, this is how you undo the adaptation. If you can get these five things in check, you will be done with hypertension sooner than you think. Now I know that you are thinking, okay, this is not the first time that I am hearing that I should go on a low carb or low sugar diet. I have cut down my carbohydrates. I don't eat fried foods as much as I used to before. I don't eat fried foods. I don't take sugar or sweet things. But Rita, my health is still the same. Now, there are four things that you should know when it comes to a, a good meal that targets high blood pressure. First, going low carb. But not just going low carb, you going low fructose as well. You also reducing your re reducing foods that have high glycemic index and also taking in a high fat diet. Fats, there are three macronutrients. Okay, we have three macro, that is important nutrients. You have your fats, you have your carb, 
and you have your protein, okay? Your body's primary source of fuel is fat. But because many people don't have fats, so many people think that fat is such a bad thing. You avoid fats, healthy fats, so not saturated and trans fats, okay? You avoid them. You don't see them as important. Your body then switches its primary source of fuel to glucose, which is where the problem starts. Because that's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be just a secondary option for your body. But you have now made it primary. And so you have things like insulin resistance, which would then cause damages to your blood vessel, increasing plaque, and your BP goes high. Okay? So a low carbohydrate, high protein, and high fat diet is what is going to help you best manage your blood pressure. Okay, and I know that you may also be thinking, okay, I understand that I don't just need to lower my carbs, but I also need to increase my protein and my fats. But I don't know any protein foods or I don't know any healthy fat foods that I can eat that would help me, right? Now let's go over a list. You may want to screenshot this slide, okay, for future references, okay? So at number 10, for healthy fats and healthy protein foods, we have your berries, all forms of berries, okay? Then you have your leafy vegetables, any vegetable that, that is in a leaf form, okay? So something like tomato now, it's, it's a vegetable, okay? But it is not in leaf form, okay? So leafy vegetables, you also have vegetables that don't contain as much starch, okay? Like broccoli, celery, Brussels sprouts, all right? Now, you also have healthy fats, okay? Like your extra virgin olive oil, your coconut oil, your palm oil. You have your olives, you have your avocado, you have your nuts, okay? Your walnuts, your macadamia nuts. You have your seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds. You have your eggs, you have your dairy, and then you have your meats, fish, poultry foods, okay? and organs, okay? So that's my list for you for 10 best protein and healthy fat foods for you to eat, all right? Now, some of you may say, okay, I am a Nigerian man or woman. This list is too scanty for me. I don't think that I can do this. Many of these things you mentioned, I don't even know them. I haven't heard from them ever in my life. Plus, I also work a nine to five job my age, I cannot get these foods, my environment is not conducive. Rita, I don't have time, I don't have energy to go and look for all these things you are, you are talking about. So I did not say that you are scrapping carbohydrates away from your diet completely. No. I said, reduce how often you eat carbohydrates. Eat more of this protein and healthy fat foods. Okay. Now, how can you put a meal plan together for yourself? As you minimize your carb and you add more protein using the list I have given you, okay? Use your berries and your nuts as snacks instead of eating things like ice cream and desserts and you ordering a takeout or anything like that, okay? That will give you saturated fats. Now, the truth of the matter is, even if you are not observing a, a low-carbohydrate diet, okay? you need supplements because you simply cannot eat it all. You simply cannot eat it all. And for many of you with the stage that you are in right now, mm, you have gotten to the point where a diet alone will not suffice for you. You need that additional help. Okay, so kinds of supplements, three key supplements that would really, really help you. Number one, your vitamins and minerals, okay? You need them all. You need them all, both the essential ones and non-essential ones. The essential ones are not more important than the non-essentials. Non-essential simply means that your body can provide it for you if you eat the essential ones. So your vitamins and minerals are very, very important. And you see, it is vitamins like this that would help you if your high blood pressure has an unknown cause, 
It is vitamins, specifically B vitamins that would help you with homocysteine levels. For those of you that, you know, it will seem as though you just woke up with high blood pressure on a fateful day. Okay, so when you take blood tests to examine yourself and you see that everything is okay with you, but you still have high blood pressure, B vitamins would help you with your homocysteine. Homocysteine is a dangerous amino acid that your body generates when you don't have enough B vitamins. Another thing to look out for are healthy fats because you should increase your fats. Get your body back to its primary source of fuel instead of carbohydrates, okay? And then your antioxidants because insulin resistance comes with a lot of wahala, okay? And one of these wahala that, that it comes with is oxidative stress, which is what damages your blood vessel and increases that plaque formation. So what do you want to do? You want to get something that would counteract that um, act. You want to get something that would put that oxidative stress off, which is what we call antioxidants. Okay? Now, what I'm telling you, I, di I didn't just... Um, Put it together for my liking, okay? This is the Journal of Food and Nutrition Research. In 2017, they demonstrated that when you supplement axizantine, which is a, an antioxidant, as well as healthy omega-3 fats and multivitamins, it improves your glucose metabolism and it reduces insulin resistance and plaque formation. The medical term for that is atherosclerosis. Okay, so the Journal of Food and Nutrition Science tells you that this is the way to go. Three major things when you're looking at supplements. Okay, a multivitamin, a, a healthy fat, omega-3 healthy fat specifically, and a very, very, very good antioxidant. Okay, that will help to speed things up for you instead of you waiting another 20 years for your BP to come down. Okay. All right. Now, let me ask you this question. If you follow what I have shared with you in secret one, utilize this new way of managing your blood pressure using food. Go back to the way things were done in the past. First of all, go low carbs, which is what I shared with you in secret two. Okay. I remember you're not just going low carb, high fats. You are giving your body time to clean out itself. You don't need anything to clean out your body for you. Your body can clean out itself. That's why you have an immune system. But you don't give your body time. Neither do you give your body the right tools that your body would need to do that clean up for you. You don't give your body tools and you don't give your body time. So give your body the right tools and the right time. And, I'm, and I've given you the tools right now. Go on a low-carb diet that would help you. And then you fast by giving your, that's how you give your body time. Go some hours each day without eating. Try it and see. Some you people already know this, that your fasting reduces your blood pressure. Try it tomorrow. Okay? Don't, don't eat for up to, let's say 12 p.m. Skip your breakfast tomorrow and check your blood pressure. And see if, if it is the same thing. Okay, as it usually would be in the, in the mornings on a regular day. Try it and see. Okay, so go low carb and also practice intermittent fasting. And when you're going low carb, turn your body back to its primary source of fuel, which is fat. Okay, so if you follow everything that I've shared with you, and if you know and you really cannot get it all from your diet, you supplement it. You supplement it, okay? That is what is going to help you accelerate your results better than somebody who is just observing low-carb and intermittent fasting, okay? Supplements will simply accelerate the results for you, all right? So, I want to ask, do you think that this is going to work for you? If you follow everything that I've shared so far, do you think that you will be successful? Please let me know using the chat. Do you think that you would have some progress if you go low carb and you practice intermittent fasting?
Okay. Okay, I see all of your comments in the chat. Mr. Daniel says, Rita, I have tried all this, but my figures are still elevated. Please keep this question for me, Mr. Daniel, okay? When I'm done with the presentation, it will be the first thing I will attend to. There is a reason for this, okay? But I don't want to get to questions now. All right, so please just keep this for me. When I am done, I will attend to it first thing, okay? All right, now let me ask another question. Are you excited about everything we have talked about so far? Are you pleased with what you have learned so far? And also let me know if you are a bit overwhelmed by the information I have shared with you today. Is anybody feeling overwhelmed? Are people feeling excited? Are people feeling a bit overwhelmed? Okay. All right. Now, it is usually impossible, okay, for me to show you everything that you need to get results in a 90 minutes presentation, but I have tried my best to cover as much as possible. Okay. So, what I've done is I've created a special package for people who want to move forward and really, really implement a low carb diet, intermittent fasting. Okay, which will help you boost your immune system as well as help with things like insulin resistance and your plaque formation. Okay, so we have 35 minutes more. Is it okay if I use the remaining time we have left to go over this package I have prepared for you? Please let me know if I have your permission. And if you don't want me to move forward, then it's totally fine. We can end this session right here and now. Okay, so please let me know if I have your permission to move forward. Okay. Okay, thank you. So this is what I have prepared for you, okay? First off, you have a meal plan and an intermittent fasting guide, okay? The truth of the matter is that you need a guide to help you with a, your, your eating pattern as well as your fasting pattern, okay? So what I've done is to create a meal plan for you for one month with an intermittent fasting guide included. Okay, so that you know that you have everything that you need when it comes to low carb and intermittent fasting. Okay, so I hope that that helps. And after that, you then have your supplement. So I have included the multivitamin, I have included the omega 3s, and I've also included astaxanthin. Okay, the exact same one that this journal recommended for you. Okay, to help you. 
All right. So that is simply the package I have prepared for you. A meal plan as well as your supplements that would help you. As well as your supplements that would help you accelerate your results. Okay. So that you can see these results faster. Okay. So let's take a look at what's inside. So you have the multivitamin. Okay. All of your essential vitamins. You don't have to take zinc here and calcium here and then you take iron here and folate here and then your b vitamins mm -mm. that means you will you'll be taking so many capsules in a day right so we just put everything together for you inside one multivitamin all right And then we have astaxanthin as well, which is what is really, really, really going to help you. This is the key ingredient in this supplement pack, okay? Astaxanthin. And then you have your omega-3 healthy fats, okay? So with these two things together, your meal plan as well as your supplements, you'll be able to first off boost your immune system. That would help you first with the side effects of your medications. The reason you suffer so much from the side effects of your drugs is because your immune system is very, very poor. Okay, that's the honest truth about the situation. So let's help you a little bit, okay? Especially with those side effects, at least. Let's start with that first, okay? Because I remember a client told me one time that his medications are ruining his life. He wasn't having all these symptoms before he started taking anti-hypertensive medications. So let's help you with these side effects of medications, okay? And then you feel good about your health and your life. When your immune system is, is, is boosted and it's up to, up to par, you will spend less on hospital bills and you wouldn't be falling sick regularly. That's access and seeing what I just showed you. It's one of the key things that would help you not fall as sick as, 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 you, as you usually would. Okay, so with these two things together, over time, you would be able to uh, manage your insulin resistance properly, as well as the poor health that comes with hypertension and its medications, you know, the fear that also comes with a, being a hypertensive patient, you suffering a stroke or a liver disease, etc. All right, so the problem of high blood pressure and its struggles, pardon me, I, I made a mistake here. I meant to write hypertension. So the problem of hypertension and its struggles is solved for you, okay? This will save you time thinking of what to eat, how you can structure your meals, when should you fast, how should you fast? You know, it will save you time and money thinking about how you can boost your immune system as well as trial and error. Because like I said at the beginning, this is a clinically approved, it's the most natural way to go about it, all right? So... Enough of the talk. Let's see if people have actually gotten results from this. Okay. Now, this is Dr. Ada. She said she ordered two packs for a patient who had prediabetes. Insulin resistance is what we call prediabetes. Okay. It's uh, the medical term for insulin resistance. He said, uh, she said, accompanied with a bad eyesight. Now, while he was still on the pack, his blood sugar went down from 21 to 4. His blurry vision which was also as a result of high blood sugar, got back to normal. Now, in addition, she placed him on a low-carb diet with intermittent fasting. So the supplements plus low-carb diet and intermittent fasting really helped him deal with diabetes. Now, this patient is already in the advanced form of insulin resistance, okay? But good for you if you are not there yet. That means that you don't have to do so much to help yourself. Okay, it would take you much less time to recover. Okay, okay, and she said another of the, uh, another of her patients took it for erectile dysfunction, which is one of the side effects of medications. Okay, your antihypertensives, and he got his activity back on track because he depended less on his medications. Okay, when you have these side effects of medications, and you begin to depend on your medications less. Okay, use another tool to help bring down your blood pressure. The effects of your medications would go down as well. Okay, 
Now that's that for Dr. Ada. Let me now share some of my personal client um, reviews with you. Okay. So these are, I would read from people who have gone through this process already. Mr. Augustin says, my blood pressure has normalized after taking a package of your products and reducing my salt and maggi intake along with constant exercise. This is a blood pressure of 10 years. I think taking the supplements and supporting it with frequent exercise and reducing sodium consumption produces a fast result, okay? Now, I want you to hear from Mr. Augustine, okay? He recorded a voice note, so I want us to listen to, to the voice notes together, okay? So that you can hear his voice and know that it's real, okay? And it's not just made up, all right? Now, I lost my WhatsApp chat at the beginning of this year, okay? However, I have hosted this webinar many times before, so what I'm about to show you now is a screen recording from my previous webinar, okay? I would have loved to go through, that is to share my WhatsApp with you live, but I lost all of these chats in January this year, okay? So please, let's listen to a pre-recorded session, okay? All right. Uh oh and this is my whatsapp okay. i hear the video so let's go to webinar three please let me know can you hear my audio If we can still get Mr. Augustine's uh, voice notes. Kindly confirm for me if you can hear the video playing, okay? Okay, so here it is. Okay. So this is Mr. Augustine, as you can see his name here, 122.77, his blood pressure recently. So he sent a photo. And it says before, it's, it's 157, 103, sometimes 160. And someone asked a good question. What is the secret behind this improvement? And he says a voice note. So I'd like us to listen to it quickly, okay? Hello, um, don't tell everyone. Oh, sorry, I'm driving now. Okay. okay, please confirm. Can you hear me, Mr. Augustine? Please let me know if you can hear him so that I can be, I can be very sure that you are listening. I will get to all questions, please. I just want to know, can you hear Mr. Augustine? I'm only sure I can hear you, but okay. I will leave the voice notes. Okay. Um, Adding to your question, the actual fact there is that um, because I, when I started, I tried that well being that I bought from uh, Rita. So I noticed one thing. So I'm somebody that usually do exercise once in a while, but I, I used to take uh, one medication, it's called Exforge for my blood pressure. But even as I it doesn't control it. I still read sometimes uh, 40 over, at least 10 was 40 over 95, but mostly I get 157 over 95, Sometimes 140 over 103, like that, like that. Even at the time, I got 193 over uh, 103. 
So, so I, and it happens when I don't, and I don't exercise for a long time. Um, I don't, I to shoot up, to go high. To be seeing 161, I'll get about. So, uh, what, one of my challenges, because of that export, I usually take like uh, 160 over 10 uh, milligrams. So, I find I need to have a decided They are starting to reach to 160 over 5. Uh, I start taking that 160 over 5 for a while, but it doesn't really reduce it. So, I just taking it for taking it thick. Let's not I don't take any medication. Because if I don't take it at all, it goes high. Or taking it, it keeps you within that 140, uh, 157 over 95, you know, within that range. So I noticed the first thing I noticed when I started taking that, where well, I realized that my immunity comes strong. So I noticed though, it makes me, I started having sleepless nights, so I complained to Rita. So she told me to be taking it in the morning, so I changed my medication. I started taking my high blood pressure at night time, start taking my medication in the morning. So I find out that I become very hyperactive. Kind of as my I don't feel tired like before. Like when I was taking my only my blood pressure and exercise, and sometimes I feel very lazy to do it as well. Sometimes I feel weak in my bone, you know. So I would just stop. But when I take the web now, I become very active. So I was able to walk start taking my medication. Then I now decide to, there's one voice note somebody shared, a doctor in a platform. So I listened to it, he talked about the effect of Maggie and salt for someone having high blood pressure. So I, this is why I eat salt a lot. So I know that I eat salt, I like anything. So I decided to start controlling it. it it's difficult, I won't lie to you, it's not easy. So it's like the food becomes tasteless. The first week, second week, third week, I struggle with it. One month, I struggle with it. So, like, I like eating. I'm not enjoying my meals. So, I, I stopped eating. I, was, I usually eat food at home. So, I struck my family like them. They become short, food conscious. So, I reduce my intake. So, I notice I start. The first thing I noticed is that I become active. If I was able to do my exercise regularly, I increase my usually I do exercise once in a week, sometimes once in two weeks, sometimes twice in a month. So I find out I can be able to do the exercise in that first period of one week I start using that medication. I become very stronger, I become active. So I start doing my exercise three times in a week. What I do. Well, I wake very early. I just walk on treadmill. Or if I cannot be able to do that in the night, you can just, if you don't have treadmill, you can walk. You know, walk this and sweat. Just make sure you're active. So I just keep it up that way. I increase it from. Two times to three times in a week. But now I've maintained it twice a week. So to be convenient. So. Yeah, the first thing I noticed that there's usually this pressure, like slight pain I normally feel in within my chest. That one stopped. The headache went, went away. The dizziness, like sometimes it is stopped. So I noticed that the blood pressure felt dropped within 130 over 85. Suddenly, I start noticing, I just maintain the exercise, control my kind of food, avoid those kind of fried food, and reduce my salt. Maggie self I don't even, even I cook soup, I use more of a grill. So Maggie, I reduce it to the minimum. Salt. The salt came in, and I was disconnected. So, so it's, you know, one thing I, I come to notice, Based on these few experiences, that if you look at yourself, most of us that are having blood pressure, especially when you are both 40, our Nigerian style this is what I've learned within the period of time. I travel a lot of sites, so I noticed something. I we often stay in one place 
most time. When I start having high blood pressure when I travel over because the comfort outside, you hardly trek. You just park your car under the car park, you go to the lift, you come back, you drive to the mall, go to your business, you just or you park, you just enter the lift. So there is no time for activity. So I started noticing I become yeah, I was started feeling dizzy. And like that when I went to the doctor, an Indian doctor then just told me my lifestyle. He didn't even he just described my life. I said, How do you know? He said he knows. He said that's the cause. That's how started the blood, high blood pressure. So most of all this is how it started. We I know we are not active. So we stay one place and Nigerian food is more fatty. Mostly oil, fried food, fried and all those kind of stuff and other junk food that we eat. So it's from the explanation of Rita I gave us the other day, the first time I joined the class, I, I now have a better understanding what someone was telling me outside the country, Indian Indian doctor. So I have a, a deep, so I begin to understand that we mm -hmm. you are taking the medication, stay in one place. Uh will not give you any result because and you are still eating the same kind of food lifestyle, eating much sodium. Which we can be, I think, from Maggie and the salt, especially for those of us that like our food to be very salty, you like salty things, or we eat in a restaurant that they, this food they use Ajilomoto and the rest, all this Amala food that have rough, salty substance. It's not good. And we don't work out, we stay one place. So you find out fat grows in our actions. She, she described it, Rita described three areas. So I begin to understand my body. So when I started taking that medication, what that medication did was that I think it boosts my immune system kind of, and it detox me. For that period, I was chilling. I still become watery. So that's what that medication did, this well -being. So I think it's kind of detox. It cleans the body system. But if you are taking it, and you just rely on it, and you're taking your blood, um, Blood, uh, medication of your high blood pressure and you are not active, you won't get a fast result. You might have a result, but it might take time because you are still eating the salt. You, uh, you know, you are eating the salt. You are eating much salty food. You are staying in one place. You are eating Fatty food, so you are regenerating those fat into the uh, arteries or blood vessels. So it's growing back, and you are not taking uh, medication. You know, so it's not going to give you a quick result. So what you notice first is that you are now killing the body because because of that medication that we are taking, that uh, blood high blood pressure medication, and without being active with it. So the thing becomes very, very difficult. You understand me? Okay. So Mr. Augustine said a lot. And if you would still like to listen to him, probably I will do a recording of this, um, of his of his voice notes and send it to you via email and also via WhatsApp. Okay. So that um, I just don't want us to spend too much time um, on this so that we can get about our day. However, somebody also sent a voice note to me, and her name is Mrs. Judy. She was also part of this third webinar, okay? And at that time, she... Okay, so let's move on while this video is still loading. Okay, I will come back to play it. Let me just give it some time to, to load. So let's move on. 
Another client um, review that I have for you is Mr. Olaleko. And he shared on the group that he is in. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to encourage those of us who have been using the supplements to continue steadfastly. As I can confirm from my own experience that my BP has been quite stable and I still have six days to finish my fourth pack. I follow the instructions of Rita, our guide, as much as I can. And honestly, I have seen tremendous improvements. Okay. And I also have Mrs. Gladys's testimonial here. And she says, I received my supplement Saturday evening and I waited five hours after taking my BP drugs as instructed. The time was 11 p.m., but I couldn't wait till the next day. So I ate an apple and I swallowed the contents of the sachet. My first observation is that I sleep very well. I only wake up from sleep when my son is leaving for work at 6 a.m. Before now, if I go to pee at 2 a.m., now so I go open eye till daybreak. Yesterday, my BP readings are shown below. I, my photo is not showing. My internet is not stable at the moment, but I can see it from my end here, okay? And it reads from 154.95 down to 116.73, okay? And then Mr. Akintayo as well. My slides are not um, loading, but I will carry on, okay? I started having symptoms of high blood pressure in March 2021, but I never knew it was high blood pressure. I was tired and dizzy. As usual, I thought it was malaria. And after three days, I started taking anti-malarial. I had to visit the hospital. The doctor said I was fine, but I knew I wasn't fine because I was already having short quality of sleep. By October 2021, I was told my BP was 150, 110. So the doctor gave me BP medications. He gave me a weak dose plus a sleeping drug. I wasn't sleeping. I was giving diclofen. I can't remember the name, but it's one powerful drug for pain. But I stopped, I stopped taking the drugs because there was no improvement. In fact, I started to develop ulcer symptoms. Later in May 2022, my HMO gave me lisinopril and I've done, I've, I'll, I'm low the pain for 30 days. The BP went down, but I was always tired, sleepy, and having headache, no energy. I was tired, coupled with the fear of taking the BP drugs all my life. By January 2023, erectile dysfunction was becoming part of the side effects of the medication. Oh, I can't see his third part. So what I'm going to do is I will gather all of these reviews together, okay? And I will share them with you on the WhatsApp group and via email as well. My internet is not allowing me to see as much, okay? But I don't want to stop the session. Let's move on because of time, okay? So let me see which ones are available. So I want to share with you my experience with Oriflame Wellness. I've been using wellness, other wellness, but it, it wasn't working for me. So when I started using Oriflame Wellness on, on the last day of May, I began to see the changes in my sleep. Formerly, I cannot sleep without using anything. Today, I can sleep anytime I want to sleep. It, I'm no longer sleeping with tablets, with milk and honey. Now I can sleep anytime. And, this, and secondly, my BP was high before. It was around 160, 80, at times 160, 90. Or if it is okay, then it will be 140, 80. But thank God after I've started using Oriflame Wellness, my BP is 120, 80. 
Now, I went for another checkup on Saturday, this last week. It was still 120. Five days. Okay. Nadi, um, how many days do you go to any spa? This one is five days. Five days. Okay, one week. Okay. Get the difference in a full arrogate. Uh, how many percent of your BPD? Before, before, you know, before, 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 the five days now, the deck at one eighty. Okay. And when he was in a notice, no, that's I don't think of it. As a more um, pains and I get what we draw now, and I'm Okay. And you recommend the one of my people or we don't want the remedies. Okay, so for those of us who don't understand Ibo, the girl asked her grandfather how many days he had been taking the supplements for, and she said he said five days. And she asked him about his blood pressure, and he said it went down from 245 to 180. And she also asked if there are any other changes he noticed, and he said he doesn't have those pains he usually has. Okay. And Pascaline says she got it for her mom. Her mom is a type that joint pain would not allow her sleep. But with the supplements, she has been able to normalize her blood pressure. Okay. And um, Balogun says, I had a very high BP and I decided to go for the supplement. It helped me normalize my BP as well as my fertility. And Aisha says, it's the best supplement ever. My grandpa's blood pressure is stable and normal ever since he started taking the pack. Okay, so I am still time cautious. We have just five minutes left. Now, I know that we may be thinking how this is going to work. Okay, there are some questions that you should ask yourself when you come around a new product. The first thing is, do you understand the contents of the product? And with this session, I believe I've answered this question. What is simply inside these products are two omega-3s, an antioxidant, and a multivitamin. So these three things working together, they would simply accelerate your results as long as you observe a good diet, okay? Please don't forget the supplements are simply an addition to you. What is really going to help you is your low-carb and intermittent fasting plan, okay? Now, I also have a reference here from a doctor as well, Dr. Stan Ekberg. Some of you may know him. He's a very popular doctor and he does a lot of YouTube videos, okay? He says the deadliest disease is insulin resistance because it kills people three times faster than even cancer. Now, sadly, many people are tied to their medications without realizing that this deadly disease comes from eating and lifestyle choices of over 20 years. If man can simply learn to eat right and supplement the complete nutrients that they, are un, they are, that they are unavailable to get from food due to seasons and locations, they can transform their whole life. There will be no need for daily medications for diseases such as hypertension and diabetes if man simply learned to eat right for himself. Okay, so I have already done a lot of research and I've taken my time to make it easy for you 
and to provide you with everything you need at your fingertips, okay? So what are you going to get? You have your Axtazantin, which is valued at 40,000. You have your two omega-3 capsules at 5,000. You have 22 essential vitamins and minerals in one capsule at 30,000. And you have your meal plan and fasting guide at 16,000, okay? Now, I have had two choices. I can go as cheap as possible and try to sell as many packs as possible, okay? Or I can demand a higher investment from you and make sure that you succeed with what I am giving you, okay? Now, what is the price of this supplement? You have it reduced down to a price from 75 to 57,990, okay? So this is for the full pack. And this full pack is what everyone that I have shared has used so far. Everything completes, okay? However, some people do complain that because of the economic state in Nigeria and things being so difficult right now, they are not able to afford 57,990. And this is not even with your delivery fee. So with your delivery fee, it can even go higher than this, okay? Especially when you don't live in Lagos. You can pay as high as 6,000 to 7,000 naira for your delivery fee, okay? So you can imagine um, that would be close to 60K plus, okay? So like I said, um, earlier, there is a key ingredient inside this wellness pack that would help you specifically as a hypertensive patient. Now you have just this um, key um, capsule, okay, which is Axtazantin. You have it now for 37,990, not including your multivitamin and your omega-3, okay? And also this is not including your delivery fee. And then you have your meal plan, which I have slashed down for you at a 50% discount, okay? So you can get this at 8,000 Naira only, all right? So this is an ebook I did not publish in physical copies, all right? So um, just a few questions before I then have your own questions. So you can drop your questions for me now in the chats, okay? So what I want to take now is some general FAQs. If this supplement is a drug, the answer is no, okay? Does it have any side effects? The simple answer is no. Can a pregnant or breastfeeding woman take it? I would not recommend, okay? Please be done with your pregnancy and breastfeeding stage before you then get on these supplements. How long will I take it slash how many packs do I need? People need a variety. For some people, they need to take it for longer periods, okay? Other people, within a short time, they are already seeing good results, okay? So it depends on first how long you have been hypertensive and how much support your body needs, all right? How long does delivery take? Delivery can take three to five working days, depending on your location. And payment options... The only payment option that we have is you pay for your products before it gets delivered to you, okay? Now, I also know that this can come with so many objections. So I simply inc included a screenshot here of a client who has received her package, but it is not clear. Let me see if I can get you a live one, okay? From somebody who has received their package in the past. So while I do that, while I open up my WhatsApp, okay, to show you some proof, let me see, let me move on, okay, with your free gift. Remember I said I have a free gift for you if you stay till the end of the session, okay? So I want to save you um, your delivery fee. Remember I said your delivery can take anywhere from 6,000 to 7,000, especially when you are not in Lagos, Okay. So I want to handle all of your deliveries nationwide, all right? So please allow me, but this would last only for one week, okay? On your supplements, and then you have your 50% discount on your meal plan, okay? So remember, if you are getting the full one, I will handle your delivery. If you are getting Axtazantin, I would also handle your delivery, okay? So I hope that um, the Axtazantin option you know, would help financially, okay? For those people who would really, really like to start, but um, 57,990 is a bit high for them, okay? 
However, I just want you to know that you would not see the same kind of results as somebody who has the full pack, okay? And of course, you have your meal plan available. So if you would like to shop Axizantin and the meal plan, it's possible. If you want to shop the full pack and the meal plan, it's also possible. If you just want your meal plan, it's also possible, okay? So the packages are not together, okay? You shop according to your decision, all right? Okay, now, Mr. Mr. Daniel, let me answer your question as I said I would. You said you have tried low carb and intermittent fasting in the past, but you did not see results. The question I want to ask is, for how long did you stick to your plan, okay? And also, did you have any supports, okay? Because sometimes, depending on how long you have had high blood pressure, you may need support to give you those kind of results that you are looking for. And please bear in mind that this is not something you just, I have gone through this webinar so that you can understand and also so that you can stick to your, to your plan, okay? And believe that it works. Okay, so that you don't just go, you, you don't just stop your plan if you don't see any results, you know, during your first few weeks. Okay, it's something that you have to stick to so that you can see good results. So please let me know how long did you stick to it? And also, did you have any support or something that would help to accelerate your results? Okay, all right. Tobin says, it would be great if you share this lecture here. Yes, my network is also really, really bad. I did not expect this, but yes, the entire session is being recorded, okay? Please, can we get this meal plan sent to our email? Yes, you can, okay? So it's an ebook. If you make payments for it, I can send a copy to your email, okay? How do I get the package? Okay. You can get the package by shopping it and then letting me know your, your delivery details, okay? There is this Normaton supplement I bought when I was taking it, my blood pressure was still high. So what is the cause? Can I know what is inside this Normaton supplement because I haven't heard about it before, okay? So kindly let me know, Techno BF7, okay? Kindly let me know. Please, when I'm taking the supplements, can I take my antihypertensive drugs? Yes, you definitely can, okay? And I would recommend that you do, okay? All right. So please ask me any more questions, okay? I will, I'm simply going through all the questions I, I can see in the chat. Um, okay, Mr. Daniel, for you to see good results with low carb and intermittent fasting, you need at least six spots to a year, okay? Even if, even if you are not supporting it with supplements, you need at least six months to a year for you to see results with insulin resistance. I don't know how your blood tests are and how high your insulin resistance is as well as your plaque formation. But please bear in mind that the minimum is six months to a year, all right? For you to start seeing good results with low carb and intermittent fasting. Now, when you add, when you have something like supplements that would help to speed up that for you, it depends on the kind of supplements that you have. Now, another thing that people don't know is that supplements are not the same, okay? I hope that you can hear me well because what I'm, what I'm about to say is important. Supplements are not the same. We have synthetic versions of supplements and we have pure and natural kinds of supplements. Now, depending on your economic strength, okay, many pharmacies, in order to make it available, readily available 
for every for everyone and anyone to be able to afford, which is a good thing. Many supplements are in their synthetic versions, okay? Now, if you compare a synthetic supplement, all right, to a supplement that is pure and naturally sourced from plants, okay, you would see 60 times as much improvement than you would with a synthetic supplement. Now, the thing is, people don't really know. And honestly, there is no special way that you can tell, okay, if a particular supplement is in a, is, is in a synthetic form or it is in its pure and natural form. The only thing you can know is knowing the, the company that is producing it, their methods of production, okay? That is simply how you know. And that's why I've, I've really, really gone out of my way to make sure that what I'm providing to you, it's in its pure and natural state, okay? And that's why it doesn't last very long after you open it, okay? Because you have to consume it within a short period of time. If not, it's going to go bad, okay? Whereas other supplements, you see that you can take them for as much as 60 to even 100 days, okay? So these are some, some little, little things that, you know, people don't know because they are not informed, okay? So please, when you are shopping supplements, try as much as possible. Maybe you can do a little research, you know, about the company and see how they produce their supplements. If they are naturally sourced so that you know that you are getting something that, that would work, okay? Because being 60 times less effective, it's a lot, okay? And that's why people don't see good results with, with supplements, okay? So I hope that this helps Mr. Daniel. My internet cuts me off again, but I hope that you can hear me, okay? All right, so please let me know any other